What is up guys, Cole Townsend here. Today's video, we're gonna be trying to install my uh, rear fenders, uh, my rear fender, over fenders. Uh, we're gonna start on the gas tank side because that is the hardest side because you gotta make the gas tank line up so it opens. The first thing you wanna do is find where you wanna cut. Once you find where you wanna cut, there's actually two layers in here. So you're gonna go ahead, make one cut, take that piece out, and then make another cut, or uh, figure out where it is behind it. And you actually want to leave more metal behind because you want to bend it up so that you can weld the tabs that you cut to this piece. I'm not going to go full send. Um, you guys can go watch like the Hoonigan video when they did their, uh, they did an E36 M3. Their E36 M3 they did, they went ahead and they cut all this like there out. And this is just completely gone here. There's no panel. Just like save weight. We're going to go ahead and not do that because I want to make sure to keep this part here just in case I ever want to go back and I don't know. I just feel like that's more full race car. I'm not ready to go full race car on this car yet. So we're just going to cut there because we know that we can cut there. Um, and then we're going to go ahead, mock the fender up and figure out where we need to put it so that the gas door opens. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and make the cut. Once we make this cut, this is like the, it means that we're doing it. We could always buff that Sharpie off there, but. Once we make this first cut, that means we're stuck to doing wide body. Um, because the front, obviously, is wide body. Um, the front fenders you can just replace. Uh, the rear quarter panels aren't that easy to replace, and there's no point to replace one on them on one of these, so. Full send. So I'm cutting this up, right? And look at all this stuff. <laughs> See how there's no metal in there? This is all Bondo. This whole panel right here is all bondo I was cutting this up to see, to expose the metal, to get to that, which is the second piece of metal behind. And right here, it looks like somewhere in here it had a pretty good hit at some point in its life. Doesn't really matter now, the car is straight, um, but that's a little concerning. Look at that big, all that Bondo in there. It wasn't fixed right. Well, some shop did a crappy fix at some point. Okay guys, so me and my dad just came to the conclusion that it's not possible to get the fuel door to be able to be opened and open all the way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead, I'll trim the fuel door because I'd rather trim the free fuel door than have to rework this whole edge here. It's not a big deal, eventually this car will be on a fuel cell. Um, that's the goal, who knows really. But we got Clecos up there and there and now we're going to go ahead and get it to be flat, I guess, get everything to lay where it needs to. The fuel door won't be able to be open right now because of the way we're doing it. And then I'll just have to worry about getting that door to work later. Um, the Clecos are pretty easy to take off and once we have those bolts, they're not rivet so it's super easy to take them off. Um, but for now, we're probably going to leave the side with Clecos on it so I can fill up with gas. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead, finish this panel, and then go on to the next side. Um, I just finished, I got that fender put on, as you guys saw. I rooted it in, it was very, like, annoying. This fuel door doesn't want to open. Like, this will be the easiest I'll ever open again. Never again will it be that easy. So that kind of sucks, but we're gonna have to trim the fuel door itself. I'll probably trim this out right here, like just a little bit so I can get my finger in there to open it. Um, right here, uh, I cut the slats up so we can, they, they used to be down here like that, right? So now it's bent up. Um, I think 
because these are rub marks right here from where the tire rubbed. I'm going to try and get it maybe another inch higher. So like bring the arch up more so that I have more clearance for up travel because obviously you don't want to be rubbing on that because this will, this inverse tire will not be good. So I'm going to go ahead and probably call it a night for now and then come back tomorrow uh, when I get back from school and get that fender, or not really this fender, uh, finish this part here, weld all these on. So tack all these like to there and then I'll chop them off and then go ahead and get the, uh, this higher, chopped up higher, the other side done, the fender on. And then after that, I think we have some bolts, hopefully some hardware coming in. So we'll have to see what happens. And then also with the, the after everything's done, we're going to get it painted so it's not super jank. But that Bondo was crazy, the fat stuff I found. Anyways, guys, I'm going to catch you guys tomorrow. Same video. And now it's tomorrow. What's up guys, it's the next day now. We're gonna go ahead and get started on cutting this fender more. But first, we're gonna clean up this mess because it bothers me and I don't like to work in a dirty space. So, let's clean that up, take this fender off, cut it out more so we have some more up travel, come over to the other side and get rid of this uh, nice looking fender. Make it look ugly and uh, get the other side on. Okay guys, so I just finished up completely with this side other than putting the actual hardware in for the body kit, which I'll do in another video. But, as you can see, I just undercoated this whole area where I welded and it's, they're not the best welds. That's actually right there is not a piece of welding wire, that's just a piece of metal that's, I left on there for some reason. Um, so yeah. But as you can see, it's all coated so it shouldn't rust. And that's all good. I got tons of wheel clearance. I got more wheel clearance than I thought I needed. Um, I think I went a little bit too high actually on the side. I'm not sure. I've never done this before. But who knows. Uh, I welded the panel all up. Everything's welded. So anything I did cut is welded back. So just as strong as it was before, hopefully. Um, so yeah. Let's go ahead and look at that panel, how janky that is. We're gonna come over here and, well now we gotta cut up this nice clean pristine panel, which really sucks, cause, ah, it sucks, but I have to, cause I mean, I've already done the fronts on both sides, now I just gotta do the back on this side, and we'll be ready to rock our wide body. So that's gonna be sweet. So let's go ahead. Get this drawn out, figure out where we cut it on the other side. I think it's right about up here. That's how much metal we took out, guys. Like, that much. Maybe, maybe more like there. But that's still a big chunk. So, let's go ahead. We'll figure out where our line is on the other side. Get it pretty close to it, draw it, and then cut it. As you guys can see, it's really glare. It's glare. The glare is really bad because it's under there. But wide body's done completely, other than 
Still gotta put uh, my hardware in. This is what my hardware's gonna look like. I'm gonna show you guys a video on that. But yeah, uh, we're missing like a few pins, a few places because we didn't have Clico clips. But what well, is done for now. Fitment's trash, obviously, because I don't have a wide body kit or my other parts. Uh, or yeah, other things we need to make it fit better, like wheels and stuff. So sweet for now. I'm stoked. Came out awesome. Um, it was a lot more work than I actually thought. Uh, I think fitting my truck fenders took me like three hours for the front and then probably like five or six for the back. And the car probably took me a lot longer than that. It is my first time ever doing it with the welding in the back uh, to get the rear arches to be sturdy again. But I did it right, took my time, sealed everything. So I'm stoked on it. It looks great, I think. Uh, it'll be even better when it has fitment. Like, I'm pretty stoked. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know this video wasn't like super like in depth on how to do it, but I hope you guys follow along with what you need to do. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. I'll answer them. Uh, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Like I want to get subscriptions up because we were trying to get to like 600 subscribers. So go subscribe. Let's get to 600 subscribers. Let's get to 700 subscribers. Let's get to 1,000. Because once we get to 1,000, we can monetize and I can start doing this like more regularly then and maybe then I'll buy a camera that's not a GoPro 3. So thanks for watching guys. Do what I just said and peace out.